Good morning, Vietnam! Heck yeah, bro! I told you guys I had a special surprise for you, so here it comes. I love doing that stuff. <laughs> but anyway, here we go today. I'm gonna build a whole ecosystem in this tiny little bowl, man, and it's gonna be freaking awesome. Orange Koi isopods, Aaron Page, do little exotics. Let's get it. Aaron, what the heck is an orange koi isopod? That is an orange roly-poly, and that's exactly what they are. They're so freaking sick. Check out the orange coloration compared to the carrot that I put in there. That is so awesome, man. Look at the, all the bustling they got going on. They got calcium powder and leaf litter. Check it out once we get all the terrarium done and add these little inhabitants inside. Box of goodie time! Everything that we got, you know Aaron goes above and beyond over here at Doolittles for everything that we get. Everything we got today was from our local pet store, the Serpentarium. It's so awesome. I know they have a bunch of locations around the United States, but here we go. Let me show you what we got. All right, everybody. So this is our box of goodies today. They didn't all fit in the box, so I bought them out. But what we're gonna start out with is the cork bark. Now the cork bark keeps humidity out and also gives them a good place to hide. I bought this little LED light off of Amazon. That's gonna be really, really cool. It changes colors. Little spray bottle for misting. Frog moss, which is gonna catch. That's also like a live moss. Now, plants. These are the best part. These are gonna what make, this is what makes it look so cool. These colors, everything else, when you throw it all in there and it comes together, it's gonna to look freaking awesome. Now, here we go. Latin phrases of the day. Hypostasis. Philastakia chakalia. <laughs> Way off. <laughs> but I also bought this yarn, a little bit of beads, some cloth. Good morning, everybody. Now, this is a different day, but it's absolutely insane what we have going on here today. Let me show you what's going on inside a shell's tank. It's absolutely insane. All right. So we put this dry food here that you just have to wet a little bit for shell. Now, this is our box turtle. And I knew that there was some beetles in here and I figured that she had ate them all, but I guess they didn't and they made mealworms inside the tank. Check this out. Let me lift this up really quick. It is all popping under there. Check that out. Absolutely insane mealworm farm inside the turtle shell tank. Isn't that crazy? All right, so the reason we're doing this video today is because isopods are becoming pets, man. They are not the cleanup crew that they used to be, and people still do use them in their reptile tanks to clean up fecal matter, aerate the soil, even spread nutrients, which is pretty awesome. Now, this is our enclosure. This is really cool. I'm wearing gloves because I don't want to put any more fingerprints than I have to. But you could also go something really cheap, like a Sterilite container from Walmart. Make sure you drill maybe just two holes. This is used for something else, so these holes don't matter. But drill two holes on this side and two tilt holes on this side, kind of high so that nothing could climb out or in. All right, so we have our enclosure. I put my substrate in there. Now I got my substrate from my old gecko enclosures. Now the gecko enclosures have cocoa fiber inside them and it's used. It's been peed and pooped all over, man. So what else I'm gonna do is morning wood, calcium powder, dude and a little bit of vitamin powder. And we're gonna mix all that up in there so that they can get their vitamins and they can get calcium. They're crustaceans. So you want them to have a really good, healthy, strong shell on the outside of them. All right, so we have all our powders mixed up in here. We have one dry side and one wet side. The reason you want this is because you want them to have a really good gradient of what they want. They don't wanna to be too moist, but they don't wanna to be too wet. Another good source of calcium, you guys, is cuddle bone. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's they usually use it for birds and such, but cuddle bone is a really, really good source of calcium. They will eat that up like crazy. Okay, everybody, so now that we have all our substrate in here, we're gonna take our cork bark and we're just gonna put it right in the middle. This is exactly how I pictured this fitting. Just perfect, look at that. You know what else I'm gonna do while I'm in here? I'm gonna take some of this substrate and I'm gonna pile it onto the back right here to give it some sort of depth. Let's just like that. Give it some sort of depth. That's gonna be awesome. Check All that. right, so we have our really cool plants here. And what I like to do with these plants, cause you guys never know, you wanna take them out of the soil that they're in. You don't want to use the soil that they come in because you never know what kind of pesticides or whatever they were using before is in the soil and you definitely don't want it to kill your bugs. So what I do, 
So I'll dump it all out and then I'll just separate the roots out. And I'll get a couple little, couple little snippets. I'm gonna let the rest of this grow after because I don't wanna put the whole thing in there. If you put the whole thing in there, it's gonna get overcrowded and it's gonna look bad. So what I would do is I would take one little snippet of each one. That way you could plant it maybe in the background or on the side would be really cool, I don't know. And I don't know about propagating these plants. I haven't really tried propagating them either. Propagation's when you take a little snippet of the plant and start a whole new plant with it. For those of you who don't know, I like to take essentially the biggest one because you're not gonna use the whole thing, but you still want a good coverage of color. So we're gonna take, I think the biggest one is this one. You might rip a few roots in the process, but that's okay. They're gonna regrow. Check that out. Isn't that awesome? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna get this out. If I can get it out. <laughs> All right, everybody, we have our plant cuts here. Absolutely beautiful. Check how the, root, how the roots are intact and everything. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep these on the wet side. So I'm gonna probably dig right in here for this one. Actually, let's dig a little bit deeper than that so we can plant deep. I'm gonna take this and we're just gonna shove it right up into there. Just like that. And we're gonna cover it all back up. Let's hit that just like that. Make sure all your roots are buried so you can kept warm. That's awesome right there. I'm gonna take this and stick this right up in there, just like that. Perfect. Perfect, everything's buried, everything looks good. Let's add our cork bark back in there for aesthetics, hiding places, all of the above. Whoop. Here we go. Check this out, you guys. Wow, that's freaking awesome. All right, you guys, so next in this build, we got frog moss. Now this stuff is really, really awesome. This is like a live moss that grows once you put it in the terrarium. It catches and everything. This is so cool. I can't wait to add it in here. I'm going to add it to the humid side so we can keep it just a little bit more of a damp feel. Now what you do with this is you open up the box obviously. This is, gets a little messy so kind of be careful and be ready for that. And you pull out a little awesome chunk, dude. Look at that. Isn't that an awesome little chunk? We don't need that much, but what we'll do is we'll dunk the whole thing. You wanna put the whole thing in water, it says. Let it soak in water for a little minute. And when it's done soaking, you wanna squeeze about 15 to 20% of, you just wanna leave 15 to 20% humidity in there. It's, you don't really want it super, super wet, but you don't want it super dry either. You want it just enough so where it can catch and start growing inside the, or inside the substrate. Now, we're gonna let this soak. This moss also comes with like its own root, which is really cool. It looks like it's gonna catch really, really quickly. The people at the Serpentarium told me that they use it in mostly all of their enclosures. So that's a good sign because they have really, really cool enclosures there. Now I'm squeezing all the water out. All right, now we are left with awesome looking moss. This is legit moss live living moss everything in here is live we're not doing no fake plants today and i'm going to shove it right in front of this plant and she said at the serpentarium that i just have to set it on the soil and it should catch that looks really awesome let me see let's get another piece in there huh we're going to put moss all back here too check it out right up in there just like that. Doesn't that look freaking awesome, you guys? Favorite time, lighting. Now I got this little LED light off of Amazon. It's an RBG, so it does change color, red, blue to green, and this is our top. Check that out. Isn't that awesome, man? Let's see, what you, what you, what you want? What you want, green? You want, you want red, blue, or green? That's awesome, it's such an awesome light. I'm probably gonna leave it on the LED feature, though. That way it can maybe help the plants a little bit, put off a little bit of heat. Now, arts and crafts time, dude. This is my favorite part. So what we're gonna do, I am leaving this. There's gonna be two little sticks right here that hold it so a little bit of air can get in. They're still living creatures, they still need air. So what I did was I took this little cloth, it came in a square and I cut it in a circle. Now I'm gonna lay this on top, just like that. I took 
this awesome little yarn and these white beads and I crafted this. This is our top. Now, it's just a couple beads. I tied it in the thing. It's going to go around this and it might not be easy to get to the isopods, but it's going to look really, really great. All right, everybody, check out our top. Amazing. Serpa Design, I'm coming for you. I probably shouldn't say that until I learn how to say scientific names, but check this out. The big review. Let's see if I can find the button. Bam. Ta-da. It even changes colors. Look how awesome that is. Changing colors. LED lights. I think we got the red coming on. Ooh, that popped. Hey everybody, so before we add our inhabitants, we need to mist down our enclosure. Now I bought this little spray bottle and it seems just perfect. What, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mist down. I'm gonna mist down the whole thing, but mostly just the moist side. Now I have paper towels right here so I can clean off all the glass when I'm done too. You might want to do that every single time if you're doing one of these because a lot of water spots will gather on the side and that's not what you want. You want it good. There we go, check that out. Get it all wet. Now our moss really helps with this moisture, keeping it in. So I'm gonna take the paper towel. I do is I usually just wipe away, wipe away. You, I hate that squeaky sound though. So wipe away, wipe away, wipe away, wipe away. Another thing that we're gonna talk about right now is humidity and heat. Now, isopods are usually okay at room temperature. But what I am gonna do, just so I can monitor for the first couple of days, is I'm gonna take this really cool thermometer it's also a hydrometer, so I'm gonna put it right here on my wet side, my moist side, right here up on the wall. Stick it just like that. And then I'm gonna bring out the thermometer, thermometer portion. Thermometer portion I'm gonna stick right here on the dry side. That way I could just get kind of a reading of an all around thing. And this is what you do for the first couple of days to monitor, make sure everything's correct. You want to do this at least for the first week to make sure everything's okay for your isopods. They like it about 70 to 80% humidity and um, high 70s if you're trying to breed, they're okay with a low 70s, but I suggest high 70s, low 80s for this is perfect. So what we have right now, I barely put it in. We already have 71%, 72% humidity and 71 degrees. So that's perfect. That's just to get it started. All right, let's add our inhabitants now. Now these are gonna dart right away, so I'm just gonna try to pour them right on top of this. Check those out. Absolutely gorgeous. Orange koi isopod setup. Check that out awesome little orange koi now i'm just gonna drop him in there just like that so much movement such awesome little creatures and i'll also put in a video of them just kind of vibing So before we go, I'm gonna leave you guys with a few extra food tips. Strawberries, mushrooms, and carrots. Almost forgot for a second. <laughs> Chop those up into little pieces and throw them in there. Just one little piece will do. Don't let it get moldy because you'll get gnats. They also have powder mixes. Supreme Gecko makes a really, really good one. I suggest that one. And I also put the morning wood in there. The morning wood helps them too. Other than that, like, subscribe, do a little reptile studio out, baby.